Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Tipples Wine of the Week virtual wine tasting. You're, you're so loud right next to me. That's <laughs> why I just went like this. <laughs> hey, you've got to be live. Come yeah, on. I know, but. I'm excited. I'm just going to start wearing an earplug right now. This is a cool here. wine. Okay, this is I'm excited fun. about the wine. All right. Okay. So welcome. <laughs> joining Elizabeth and Jeff Baudre, the owners of Tipples Brews and Wines, Gainesville, Florida, US of A. <laughs> this could be a fun one tonight, everybody. I'm in a good mood. All right. This week, we are going to, and I didn't know I'd ever be saying this, Armenia. I'm excited to try it. An Armenian red. It's the Zulal Areni from Armenia, the valley of Vayats Zor. I love saying all those words. It's super fun, right? <laughs> if you've not already done so, it is that time to pop open that bottle of yours. I gave mine a light chill, bringing it down to around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. For all of our international viewers. Exactly. Just in the, case. the massive number <laughs> of international viewers. I gave it 30 minutes in the refrigerator to bring it down just a touch. It will warm right back up to the household temperature in the 70s. But why not give it a shot to start up like they would in Europe? Uh, if you will, after you take your first sip, mm -hmm. pop up the full first slide. We'll talk about ratings and food pairings. That was my second sip. Second sip it is. Yep. All right. So the Zulal Areni, wine enthusiast, 90 points. All right. Um, it actually has uh, a younger sibling, so to speak, that um, also had 90 points. This one also received a 92-pointer as well, which I found late okay. in the game. But um, so um, up to 92 points on this guy. Do you remember who it was from? Because this is Wine Enthusiast. It was Wine Enthusiast. I believe the other one, I can't remember exactly, and I don't want to attribute it to the wrong sure, person. Sure, sure. Um, but it's there, I swear, totally. <laughs> So food pairings, braised beef, spinach and mushroom veggie lasagna, liver and onions, your favorite. Yep. Uh, beef and mushroom pot pie. Huh. So rich and savory foods are going to go great with this, this wine. Like if you had something with hunter sauce, would that work with it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Venison with hunter sauce yeah. would be amazing. Because we're, we're dealing with some, some nice big fruit, but really big spice on mm -hmm. this guy, right? All right. Um, I will go through some of the particulars of the wine while we take a sip and smell the wine, the aromas. You want me to stop the share? Please stop the share. All right. So give it a swirl. Take a sniff. Mm, I'm going to tell you, um, like really nice, like um, cherry and like a dried strawberry on the fruit. Mm-hmm anise like a licorice quality okay so that's that anise quality is what i always think of like as a camphor quality but it's not not camphor, quite the same anise. yeah not okay. quite the same okay not that there are wines in the world with camphor mm -hmm. right or eucalyptus okay but not i wouldn't say this guy okay. right that would not be what i would describe it as but it is this elevated spice but not quite floral mm -hmm. quality which is why i totally get the connection okay yeah so then we have the chat box. Linda just said cherry. Yep. Must have been just before you. And then um, Chris said, I was going to say, is that Fernet? I don't know that word. Fernet? You're Fernet? talking about, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a very herbal drink. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have not had that. No. Because you have not served me that. Literally. It, well, I only drink what Jeff is saying. Not you know, because he's holding me hostage, just because I. You haven't had it. I've indicated because that. Because I love you and I don't want you to do something <laughs> that is disgusting. And Robin is wholeheartedly agreeing yeah. with that. It's horrible. I got to say, I will drink Lindenberg all day long before a Fernet. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't enjoy it. I'm sorry, Italy. But uh, there's Chris. Like, okay, fair enough. Oh, kind of licorice -y. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. And then um, Linda also said that she feels her senses similar to the one from the Canary Islands. I love that call. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Love that call. I think that the fruit is a darker fruit mm -hmm. than the one from the Canary, which is more cherry cranberry, okay. but with the pepperiness and the spicy bang, 
and this has a little more tannin too, but it definitely reminded me of that Canary Island wine. So I love that she came up with that. Uh, I, I, cause I really was going to say that later on, I was even a little undecided about whether I would say it on the recording or oh, off okay. the recording. Well, this is great. Yeah. And then, so, uh, Fontaine de Oro. That's right. Right. And yeah. then we're some allspice too. All spice, yep. And then Rachel loves the Canary Island wine. Mm -hmm. And it reminds, yeah, of the um, Tate wines. It reminds Rachel of the Tate wines. Oh, okay. And, oh, all right. So for this, this one, not the, the yeah, yeah. This one, because of the intense fruitiness, right? So because it's a deep, dark, it's really dry, but there is deep, intense fruit on this guy and the color. So that big taint wine, you know what else is interesting? Mm -hmm. The taint, the ball buster, right? That was a 16% big alcohol wine. This is a 15 percenter. Oh, really? So Rachel is why <laughs> has really connected all of that. She might be better than she knew. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And then um, and then she also said today's wine reminds me of the oh, the mm -hmm. same thing, the ball buster, mm -hmm. taint the ball buster. Yeah. Mm big deep rich incredibly mm -hmm. spicy and really nice tannin right mm -hmm. so not huge tannins but definitely significant tannins that are that run from the front of the palate to the back of the palate yeah. and they hang out well that's what i was going to say they, they linger they do yeah right it's not like they just grab and move right and it, as yeah. i as i talk mm -hmm. you know the wafting flavor it does have a long finish i get this combination of almost um amaretto and strawberry right like an anise amaretto thing going on on the finish was i i thought was really fun while i was tasting this the first time with my wine rep so uh yeah, really I fun I, i'm gonna tell you i didn't know exactly what to expect when um <clears throat> ian with consortium came in to, to taste six different armenian, armenian wines uh -huh. and i thought well this is going to be an adventure if nothing else every single one was delicious they're really good now this is the top of the line and i thought if i'm going to present an armenian wine sure let's go right up to what the, you know the beautiful example and just go for it right mm -hmm. but they do have a beautiful sparkling white and a younger sibling i don't know younger brother younger sister uh, mm -hmm. that you want to go on this guy how what is the difference in the taste so the younger let's go the younger sibling yes. on this one right younger vines mm -hmm. a little brighter red on the fruit okay. less spice and certainly less tan okay a little more acid a little more tart okay right it, it, th that one sees a little less oak as well because mm -hmm. oak is expensive right so 15 percent mm -hmm. and we have tannins mm -hmm. are we aging yes okay all right so obviously because we're enjoying it right now and this is a 2020. Okay. And this is a young wine. Yeah. It's good to go right now. But this guy can do up to 10 years. Not necessarily intended to wait, right? Because it is made to go mm -hmm. right now. But because you got a higher alcohol, you've got good tannins, and you have some acid left. We've got some freshness on there. It's it's a dark fruit, but it is not, it doesn't taste like a dried fruit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So um this guy could definitely hang out. I would say probably could go 10 years. That cannot be said for the younger sibling. It, the younger sibling sees a lot more stainless, less oak. It is got the acid, mm -hmm. and, but it's just not made for it. Okay. So you don't like buy the younger sibling and say, well, I'm just going to age it a few years and I'm going to get this wine because it doesn't see the oak regimen. Okay. So it's not going to have the same exact sure. effect, sure. but they're both delicious. They're really, really good. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the history. Well, we're going to talk actually a lot about the history of Armenia winemaking. Okay. Uh, it's fascinating. So. And before we move on to sharing, mm -hmm. we have a couple of comments. So the Hodgett says, say that theirs has been open for about 45 minutes and the flavors have softened and blended. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And then um, 2020, kind of crazy. This has a lot of length on it. Mm -hmm. I can say that. Yeah. Mm hmm um and then oh oh it's and, 19 i said it wrong okay. it's 2019 because then because julie has 2019 yeah. the, there was a whole thing it, i i drank the 2018 the 2018 had a white label uh -huh. 
they sent me the 2019. I popped open the bottle to make sure it was as good. Right. It is. Yeah, because some vintages are oh, yeah, can change. very, very different. And we're dealing with Armenia, right? We're not dealing with Napa Valley where they would have lots and lots and lots of history mm -hmm. of making exactly the same wine oh, sure. for the American palate kind okay. of thing, right? So yes, Armenia has a tremendous history of winemaking, mm -hmm. but you'll see this is actually a fairly young winery. Okay. So there could be variations. Okay. I was very pleased with the consistency moving vintage. Are they new to um, uh, exporting to the United States? Yes. Okay. And actually we'll talk about why that is too. Okay. So Julie thought maybe she had the wrong bottle, but nope. No, no, you're totally right. Mm -hmm. I said the wrong thing. I was just dealing with a different wine right before I came home, and that was a 2020, and it was a red. So, all right. Ready? Let's go. So now it's time to take a look at the label, right? And in the picture for the label, it, it is white, but mm -hmm. the black one is what we're, we all have. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. This I haven't even been able to find this label out there. So... Uh, go to the next slide for me, please. So label time, not the, once again, forgive the black versus white. So the Irani Reserve 2019, right? So reserve in that area, we've talked about this before. Reserve does not universally mean anything, right? It, it means something very specifically in Spain and Italy. It means nothing in California. <laughs> They'll put Vintner's Reserve on the thing that is six ninety nine to the public. You mm -hmm. know, it's like I don't even know what you're doing right now. But this reserve does matter. So, in this reserve it is versus the other one, um, older vines, and it is um, barrel aged. But sees a lot more oak. Mm -hmm. That's what they mean by the winemaker. Once again, not definitive. Like, so if you were just because this one means that in Armenia, it doesn't mean Armenian always means that. Okay. They do not have a designation okay. of what reserve has to mean. All right. So you see it and you can take it for what it is. Say, okay, maybe it means something. Maybe it doesn't. In this case, it does. Okay. But you would need me to tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. So on the back, they give a really nice description of the flavors in the region. This is um, producer is Zulal, right? So they do make this wine themselves. We see that. They make it, they bottle it. Um, they have the importer, which is Storica wines, which once again, not a big enough importer to for me to say, oh, memorize that guy, look for okay. him. Though I will say beautiful choice on their part, really nicely done. Uh, you've got the ABV on there. This is a negotiant wine, so it doesn't say a state on okay. here anywhere. So one of the things, and I was talking about this with the wine rep today, a state is like a bonus. A state is not a necessity. There are many of the best wines out of France that are all negotiant, it means they buy the grapes. So a state is a bonus, yeah, um, but it doesn't necessarily indicate quality, right? But uh, so in this case, they buy the grapes. We'll talk about where they buy them mm -hmm. from, uh, but yeah. they are making the wine themselves. Are you guys trying to share something besides this black screen? Nope. All right, cool. <laughs> we, he's going through the label itself. So you look at your look at your own wine bottle in the back of the label right. for this part right now. So whenever yep. we're on this screen, and we should probably talk about that we for should. viewers too. So whenever we're on this screen, pick up your own bottle, look at the front when he's talking about the front, and then look at the back of the, the label. Um, yeah. And he's just telling you, so in case you're not at tipples, right. you can, um, make a more educated buy on your own if you're right. out of town. Good point. And <laughs> I didn't, I've done it so many times. I didn't lead in with right. a wine label review. Yeah. The point is if you're in your normal wine store where you're not getting help, these are the high points that I would look at. Okay. Wait, I'm going to interrupt you a moment. Your normal wine store should be tipples, but if yes. you are... <laughs> Outside of Gainesville, That's right. <laughs> and you do not have um, actual help like you do at Tiffany's, right. mm -hmm. then, then, then exactly. this, this just helps you. We do this every time so that if you're in a wine store and you're choosing blind right, without help. You're on vacation. Can, right. You're picking something up. I'm going to, I, what I like to share during this time is what I would look at mm -hmm. if I'm traveling yeah. and I'm looking at a wine I don't know anything about. 
and how I would assess that wine. So just a little bit to help out. Right, exactly. And thank you for asking that question because we need to do explain it when we got. You're right. To this Sometimes point. we yeah. get locked into like, oh, here's the here's right, the right, rhythm. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. Got to come at it with fresh eyes. All right. Absolutely. So the next slide, please. Okay. Oh, wait, actually, let's just stop for a minute. Okay. All right. And we do have a chat. Let's see. Okay, good. Da -da -da -da. Tipples is normal. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes, it said. Yeah. <laughs> Your usual mm -hmm. wine store, That's let's right. say, should be Tipples. Mm -hmm. Nothing normal <laughs> about Tipples. Yeah. Right. Well, the great thing about Tipples is you don't have to be there, Jeff. Like, I feel like Jake and the other guys are, are just as knowledgeable, probably not just as knowledgeable, but but sure do fake it really well. <laughs> like, they, yeah, right. they know what they're talking about, right? Yeah, no, they're great. And you, you're yeah. exactly right. And that is one of the things that really make me happy is I don't have to be there for the store to have expertise. The guys are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They learn more about wine and beer every single day, just like me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an ongoing process. Um, and we do pride ourselves on that but right. not every place not every store is that way and thank you Jason. <laughs> yeah. it'll so, go well um, for when you open your second location yeah, <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to um it's gonna have to be like inoculating it with one of the guys in order to get the right oh yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so uh let's see i was looking at, i wanted to make sure we'd covered the <laughs> scent and the flavors thoroughly <laughs> before we went on but we really did cover a lot of that already i just wanted to make good and sure well, if anybody wants to make any all right, so comments now that I've covered the list. tasting, especially since it, I mean, for most of us, it's it's opened up more. Uh, so it's just a, it's so cool. It's what I like about the the wine is is it's it is a different wine, is unique, but it's bringing me flavors that I've had in other areas and yeah. stacking them up that are all very pleasant. I feel like um, since we opened it, I'm getting more of a peppery taste now too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's one of the things that will remind you of the front end order from mm -hmm. Canary Island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's jump back in then. Okay. We've got some cool stuff to talk about. Yeah. I'm excited because we have not been to this part of the All world, right. So, so the Areni grape, it is not known as any other name. Like this is not, when we looked at it originally, I thought, okay, it's the Areni grape. That's obviously called something else, somewhere else, right? right? No. And it, sh it shares no DNA with any of the other wine grapes out there. That's amazing. It's one of the first domesticated grapes in the world. Okay. This area is the origin area between um, Armenia, Georgia, the surrounding areas mm -hmm. um, that uh, for winemaking in the world. Wow. Yeah. So the uh, let's stick with the grape, uh, Ronnie grape. Um, it is named for the the town that is that it's, it's so Arani. think about how long that town has been there, yeah <laughs> right? that that region it's a, it's a region it's not just a yeah. town but that it has been called a Rennie since the grape has been around for by the way thousands of years okay that's what I was just going to ask yes. yeah um, I mean if it was one of the first I know it's been at, at least two thousand years yeah. right? well we'll go into exactly how many thousands uh, <laughs> okay. when we go to the area uh -huh. um, so because of geographic isolation and tough, harsh growing conditions, mm -hmm. phylloxera never got here. Oh, wow. They've never been infected. So all of these grapes are ungrafted. Hmm. So grape and root are all the exact same. Is and that, that's Greece too, right? Some, most areas of Greece, okay. yes. And so when you get into that region of the world, because mm -hmm. Greece is not that far away, right. you get where it's so harsh and so isolated that the phylloxera, phylloxera infection could not reach it. Okay. Right. Um, so thick skinned. Okay, before we go on, because I know it's been a while since mm. we actually talked about phylloxera, you want right. to do a little summary? All right, so phylloxera? phylloxera is a root aphid, an aphid being an insect that basically is a vampire. It sucks the life out of the vine, right? So the phylloxera aphid is a, it lives in the ground, uh, came from the southeastern United States and it infected Europe after we began trading produce from the new world to the old world. And it and almost- infected South America too, right? It did. Yeah. Um, not Chile. Though. Not Chile, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, 
Chile because, because they, they shut everything down their, hard. Yeah. yeah, like to yeah. this day, Chile shut, you know, is very protective mm -hmm. of people coming in. So, um, or goods. but Argentina, well, people too. Okay. Like <laughs> they told me, mm -hmm. and you can, and like somebody could tell me I'm wrong, but okay. this is what I was told. Okay. That if you list your profession mm -hmm. as a winemaker, mm -hmm. You're not allowed to bring your shoes into the country. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because they're afraid you were walking in your vineyard right. and you have phylloxera and you'll bring it in. That's what I was told. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Makes that airport a little bit faster not having to take your shoes off. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, no shoes go. for you. Yep. You just have to come over with no shoes. Right. Um, so, so then it infected yeah. Europe. It infected Europe, especially. Right. They had no way to stop it. It was killing all the wine grapes throughout France and in, in all of Europe, mm -hmm. Italy, Spain, not all of Spain, most of Spain. Um, and then in the end, the solution was to graft the roots. So they would take the root stock from a grape, an indigenous grape in the southeastern United States and graft it onto the vine of Vintus vinifera, a wine grape. And so the Southeastern indigenous grapes are able to fend off this pest. The because they grew with the phylloxera. Right. Yeah, so they, they, yeah, yeah. they so, evolved to deal with right. it. That was the whole thing. That was actually created by a botanist in Texas. Right. So he saved all the winemaking in Europe after we infected all the wine. After we infected in it. Europe. And they really did think <laughs> there was like, there was absolute panic. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I mean, it was, they, they thought wine was done. They, this was all going to be gone and except for small pockets mm -hmm. so anyway um craziness yeah no that's so in case you didn't know so that is phylloxera that's what it's, that is yeah. and they didn't ever have to deal with it because it never got there it never got so. there yeah so they're um, in a mountainous desert yeah. <laughs> the canary islands never got it too right right yeah right, they're just yeah. in the middle of the ocean the ocean so, mm -hmm. yeah. off the coast of africa so um we have uh chris is saying there's a lot of dark fruit maybe some blackberry mm. And then also, this is an interesting point. These vendor breweries where they have pretty strict policies regarding if you've been to their sour facility, because sour is an infection. Right. That's how you get sour beer. It's a tasty infection. But right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So yeah, got to wear booties or go home and change first. That's the like thing. That. Is that yeah. A lot of the, mm -hmm. the yeast that creates sour beer is stronger than the st standard yeast. And it will out, it'll out compete. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so. he's saying you don't have to change your clothes before just drinking. It's if you're on the brewing <laughs> yeah. side, you are allowed to go in and drink. Right. <laughs> you just can't go over the brewing side. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Same same kind of thing. Sure. Yep. Ready? All right. Yep. Um, back to the slides. Yes, please. Okay. So we talked about phylloxera. Never grafted. Thick skin protects it from the harsh summer sun. Okay. All right. <laughs> so this is where where's the origin, right? So here we are. This is the region. All around the uh, Caucasus Mountains is where we are. But this is the origin of winemaking, right? Um, wait, let's, we're going to finish with this grape, though. Uh, Thick-skinned, because it is high elevation, lots of intense sun, lots of dryness. Thick skins prevent the sun from raisinating the grapes oh, okay. over time. Right. So they can hold on to their water mm -hmm. and it adds much more intensity of color, flavor, and tannin. tannins. Yeah. Right. So um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. So uh, let's see here. Uh, makes wine with like to say, let's talk about high, uh, high clarity, high clarity. So not hazy, but intensely colored and uh, fresh acid soft to intense or more intense tannins. We're dealing with higher elevation in older vines. We get a little more intensity on these tannins, mm -hmm. which I think is very, makes me happy. Uh, that's once again, like the reserva, the gra you know, that's choosing you know, different grapes. Wait, I have to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. You said not hazy. Are there wines that are hazy? I know there are beers that are hazy and it's acceptable now for beers mm -hmm. to be hazy, but yes, there are, are hazy wines. There are hazy wines. Are they any good? Like, can you drink a wine that's hazy and be like, oh, this is fine. I have. Really? We, yeah, we have one in the store. Uh -huh. It's rough and ready and hazy and intriguing. And okay. It's it's an experience, right? Okay. It, it's a very different kind of thing. All right. Yeah. Where's that one from? Not New Zealand. Uh, that's from Australia. 
It is a Zabibo is oh. the grape. Yeah, you've talked about Zabibo. I have. I'm so, not saying I want that, but I think I want that. Yeah, no, it's, I it's, was like, Jillian, I can no, it's, that. it's really, really cool. And that's one of those where you crack and you drink it, you know, mm-hmm. and um, not, not so much for aging because of all of everything. It's open fermented. It's rough and ready, but delicious. Okay. It's really a very intriguing wine. I'll right. try that. So, all right. Um, origin. So here we are. Uh, current evidence suggests that this was the origin of winemaking. And the uh, the time frame is from 8,000 to 4,000 BC for wow. when they started. And they're basing that on a combination of clay pots with residue and actually some of the older uh, fossilized versions of um, seeds and things that are part of domesticated winemaking. So, Julie wants you to have a Zabibo tasting. A Zabibo tasting. <laughs> a Zabibo tasting of one. <laughs> no, I think for, for the wild group, I think. She no, again. Yeah. So um, the expansion. So it started here. Here's mm-hmm. where winemaking started. And then you went over to so the Phoenicians. One of the early forms of payment was wine, right? Mm-hmm. So they began to trade all around. And then the Greeks began making wine. So you can see where it kind of is the spread of the area. To do um, here was the early kind, uh, early way it was done submerged earthenware vessels. So they had oh, all of the grapes. In it. Why, why submerged? Why, you know, why, heat. yes, to dissipate the heat. So, in earth, especially if it was moist earth, it would mm-hmm. really draw it away. But eh, who knows if that would bother the earthenware? So, most likely dry earth, but still, you're getting it down to those cellar temperatures to try and cool down what's going on and draw the heat off. Cool down. That's right, six thousand BC, and this is what it looks like. There's still some left. That's awesome, right? I can't believe they're still around. Isn't that, that crazy? That I mean, I could see finding like remnants of it, mm-hmm. but yeah, yep. that's yeah. amazing. And they have a pizza oven in the background there. There we go. <laughs> so, Dad, all right. Question. Yes. So, since you're showing all these ancient pictures, you're calling this an ancient grape. How much older is this grape than something like the Cabernet? Great. Oh, that's a good question. It is literally thousands of years older. Do yeah. you know about when Cab? Um, was- Cab, no, they don't have a definitive, hybrid. but I would say Cab is probably more like um, 500 years old, something like uh, that. Yeah. yeah. So there's difference. a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah, because I, Cab was was created. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Creation. So what what's something else that approaches this level of oldness? Um, there are a couple of others uh, that are from this area, and they're all names that do not stick with me because they're not names any of us know, okay. you know. So, I mean, I ran over them, and they went in and out of my head like, you know, like <laughs> water through a sieve because so they were they're so even something you would call old world, like in Italy or Spain is not this old. They're still not this old. It's this not, is not even, world. Not even yeah. remotely approaching this old. Exactly. This is old at an entirely different level. Old is in hundreds of years, right. not 4,000, right. 8,000 years. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. It, it all started Maybe there. Maybe 1,000 years, yeah. yeah. And they, I'm sure what happened is they inspired them. They went around in those different regions and they found their own grapes that could make it work. Um, which is interesting that, you know, I'm shocked that there was no lineage where they would just transplanted these grapes. But there is no indication that that is the case. Huh. They instead went to go find, they were inspired to find their own grapes that they could make. And, and not all grapes have enough sugar. I mean, your, your average table grape does not make enough sugar to make a decent wine. Table grape as in grapes that you just eat. Like right, you just go grapes. to Publix and grab, you know. Oh, you're welcome. Welch's, Liz. It doesn't approach Welch's grape at all. <laughs> right, right. This That's is really a testament. Made- Go ahead, sorry. I was going to ask you to go back to the last slide while we're talking really quick, just because it goes with conversation, but also because my my nerd daughter wants, in a good way, she loves being a nerd, wanted to see it a little longer. Like yeah, I it's really cool, it to her. Right? Yeah, she loves old world stuff, like 
she loves studying this stuff. And I started to show it to her and she was like, whoa, cool. And then you switched it. Oh, <laughs> oh right. <laughs> we apologize on Jeff. Jeff. I'm sorry. That I, hit was Jeff I, hit it. I was going to the other part where you can see it like sideways. <laughs> Thank you. So obviously they're spinning the thing, they're crushing the juice and it goes down into there. And then they move that aside and they work with it. I didn't want to be blamed for just- yeah, No, it was me. Yeah. It was me. Yeah, By the I way, guess. um, also to, interesting to keep in mind, back then, most of the wine they were producing was sweet. Oh. I mean, it, 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 dry wine is a relatively, in the hundreds of years, mm -hmm. newer phenomenon. Hmm. Was it just sweetened by the actual grape juice? Yes. So because of very, they, they were not able to ferment as well because they didn't have temperature control. Mm. So the uh, the fermentation would finish early and it would leave residual sugar. And so you're probably dealing with the much more like a six to seven percent alcohol in a lot of sweetness. Huh. And probably the worst hangover ever. Oh yeah, all that sugar. Yeah. 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 Even though in, in all the rough edges that they would in a mm -hmm. rough fermentation, mm -hmm. just that sounds like brutal, <laughs> brutal next morning. And, and, and early on, they probably weren't aging their wines for years or anything like that. Very good point. Yeah, absolutely not. They were not even using oak. They were fermenting it in those clay, uh, those big giant clay <laughs> pots, and then ladling it out into some additional clay pots and saying, here you go, buddy. <laughs> Have a great time. There you go. Yeah. It, the hogs it's game of thrones wine there you go <laughs> yeah, absolutely thank you for doing that for oh you're welcome my pleasure all right ready yes let's move on so um this one or yeah. the next one we'll go with this one real quick okay thick skins uh -huh. um we're dealing with a semi-robust interior intermediate zone um they do have wonderful acidity and sugar plenty of sugar um more than acid, but that outer area is obviously very intense to deal with brutal conditions in that area. So incredibly dry, incredibly hot, lots of intense sun because it's also the elevation, which we're about to talk about, is about 6,000 feet above sea level. Jeez. Yeah. So um, that that will definitely, this is a, a real survivor of a plant. Yeah. Gosh, 6,000 yeah. feet. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right, so where are we, right? So where the heck are we? Right? And no, we're here, we're right in the middle. So actually, we're over here, excuse me. And let's go in a little closer. So see, here we are mm -hmm. up here. We get on here, but you look at these. So we are down here in the orange section, Okay. right? That's where Areni is. And Areni being the grape, being the region, right? But you see that it's surrounded by here. Iran is right here. Wow. Turkey. And some people say, well, why, why haven't we had, if they've been making it all this time? Well, they were controlled by the Soviets until 1991. Oh, okay. 1920 to 1991. And then you've got a very, you know, there's a lot of geopolitical problematic issues with getting wine out of here, sure. which is why we've not had that much from them. Even though they've been making it longer than anyone else. They've been making it. <laughs> <laughs> so long right yeah so like you say about we're talking about 10 10 to six thousand years so let's call let's say if you were to say a, you're going to be a pessimist mm -hmm. right and say i don't believe it's been that long well it's still six thousand right it's still right. six thousand years that's the lowest mm -hmm. it's insane so high elevation like i mentioned before six about you know an average up and down but they get up to six thousand feet above sea level dry farmed because there's not a lot going on there as far as infrastructure, right? Um, dry, hot, long growing season, lots of minerality in the soil. Um, so they're recovering their quality. They were doing better, but in, from 1920 to 1991, they were Soviet controlled. The Soviets came in and said, look, enough of this quality stuff. We want quantity. And so what they were growing it for is to turn it into, into brandy. Okay. So they were just growing massive amount of grapes. They did not care. They wanted the sugar juice to ferment and then turn and then distill it into brandy. And so that was what happened. So it's only been since 1991, people ran back in there to try and 
there's few people that even remembered that right. they could make it to try and make better wine out of the area. And so it's really kind of just getting its legs under it again to a level that it has enough wine mm -hmm. of good quality to distribute to the world. And these are Armenians that are bringing it back, not like French or Italians that are... Yeah, from what I've seen, okay. they are Armenians. And it's a okay. good point because in Slovenia, mm -hmm. it's the Italians. The okay. Italians are going over the border mm -hmm. and they are making great wine, but... It's Italians making right. wine in Slovenia, right? Well, and we saw in South America, we've seen people that have bought up land in South America mm -hmm. and then are making great wines down there, but they're not South. Right. I think this it was Uruguay that we were talking about that, but mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Would you like for me to- Yes, on? please. Would you like to pronounce everything on the map first before we move on? Yeah, I do not. You're right. <laughs> okay. But hey, Bayat Zor, how about that? That's our valley. The, okay. or, the orange one there. Okay. <laughs> That's it. There Bye. we go. That's fun. All right. So here we go. So the Armenian vineyard. So we're talking about mountainous, arid, um, some great shots here. Um, but this now, is basically it, it almost looks like it's been photoshopped with one image superimposed on top of another. Mm -hmm. I was because... gonna say that's not ugly, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a problem. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay, there you go. But you, there you can yeah, see I mean... how, how arid it can be. I mean, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> I can see Moses' ark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready? Yes, or Noah's. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, you know. Come on, Moses. All right, so here we are with um, the Zulal winery, you know, page. So we've got this is the valley, which we talked about the valley out right. there. So there's they actually source from forty different growers within the valley, and uh, are so these it's all, all grape. Everything you see that's green is it all grapes? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. But right. uh, but this is the valley itself, and the, they're in different subregions mm -hmm. within there. It's all pretty small, which is you know amazing still that they're able to make this. Is, they, but they do make um, ten thousand cases a year. Oh, so they're they're putting out some product here, mm -hmm. probably largely you know up up on the slopes a little bit as well as along the bottom. So the next one, please. So this is the owner and uh, the head of the winery, right, Amy, Amy. Kushgarian. How about that? Yeah, right? that sounds pretty good. So yeah. her, her whole focus here was to collect this um, a wonderful grape, incredible growing region, and apply modern wine growing techniques. Okay. So not just modern wine uh, grape growing, but wine making techniques. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, I do believe, maybe going out on a limb a little bit mm -hmm. here, that we're seeing the best wine ever produced from this area. But I think it's really impressive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's so interesting though. It's like what one of the oldest grapes in the world. Yes. But it's being produced with modern techniques. Right. Yeah. And it's taking it to the next. So yeah. She, 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 she's By a working. female. Right. Vinter. That's the. Vinter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so she's gone in there and she's mm -hmm. working with them on how they're growing the grapes and how, of course, you ferment the grapes. Yeah. To make the best wine. And it's taking this very ancient grape, very mm -hmm. ancient region, mm -hmm. and making the best wine it's ever made. Yeah. Which I think is exciting. And I yeah. love her picture. She's got the sword to knock off the top of the wine bottle. You can see the right. top. Yeah, because she does make sparkling as well. And okay. it's delicious. Yeah, that's I'll really bring cool. some in. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. It's worthy, for sure. So, all right. Well, that's to so, fight off the sand raiders, Elizabeth. That, that's not for the wine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's for the what? Right. Say it again, so Jeff can hear me. To fight off the sand raiders, Jeff, because oh, the sand raiders like sand oh, right. between two deserts that area. Yeah. Hey, look, if you automate anything, maybe the Jawas come in. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Everybody who's not a Star Wars fan is like, "What are they yeah, talking I about?" Yeah. I laughed heartily, Jeff. It was a good. One. <laughs> <laughs> TV. All right, so. Wine ratings. All right, I talk about this all the time. So combination, like put a little merge in your head of partly what you enjoyed about the wine, but also 
how interesting is the wine? Does it have unique character? And was it cleanly vented, mm -hmm. well made? And whether or not it was your favorite ever, was it well made? There's no problems with the bottle, that kind of a thing. Blending it all together. I find it interesting because this week is, I think, the first week ever that we absolutely cannot compare it to another wine with this grape. Well, that is true. You know, that is, this is it. This right. is the only one we, so there's no comparison with another, like when we have cabs, I mean, there are a lot of comparisons, right. but yeah. different, you know, most of them we've had at least one comparison that we've had something before, but this is literally right. completely new to everybody. Oh, you haven't had another already? I mean, it was with my boyfriend, but I didn't want to talk about it. Oh, camera, yeah, so, that's fair yeah. enough. That's fair enough. That's forbidden fruit. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about him, but I've had some wine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this guy's got 90 to 92. So it's other people have thrown it into the outstanding wine character, car category of wine superior character and style. But it could also be a very good wine. And there is nothing wrong with a very good wine. I think if you go out and you have a very good meal, you're pretty happy. Um, 80 to 84, a good, hey, that's a good wine. Enjoyed myself. Nothing wrong with that at all. So you have to get all the way down into the 70s before you'd say that's a mediocre wine. Not thrilled I joined that, you know, that, uh, you know, that I grabbed this guy kind of thing. No, I think it's so funny, though, with this, this explanation, it says a drinkable wine, and then it says may have minor flaws. So none of the ones above it have any flaws, evidently. Yeah, right. You get to mediocre and it has minor flaws. I yeah, think, right. I'm thinking that little description right. should be up a little higher, but no. Right. And, and it's that thing, too, that I always say where because, because of this, there's this weird thing where this cluster of you know, like 88 to 92 points in the market where there's right. almost everybody's there. Right. And there's very few well, below. Well, almost everyone's there that asks for ratings. Yeah, that's true. So a lot there of people- There are plenty of wines yeah. that are not there that they, either- They don't ask. They don't ask because they, you have to pay to right. be rated. You have to pay they're to be so, rated. so small, they don't ask or- or they get the rating and they're like, yeah, we're just going to tuck that in our pocket. Right. No one wants to know. Or we're specifically making it and we know it's trash. It's just to sell a lot of it. Yeah, there is that. And they don't even right. put it up for ratings. Right. That kind of thing. So, so wait, hold on. We have some. Oh, we, all right, I think we probably have the, coming in. Scores are coming in. Okay. Should I stop the share then? Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay. All right. So hold on a second. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Where are we? Chris says mm -hmm. a 92. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Laura, Linda, John, and Brenda, while we don't really have a comparison, we thought this was very, very good. 90 from all of them. Okay. Um, Linda, 90. Paula, 91. It really went with the short rib crostinis from Spurrier's. I nice. feel like I always rate higher when it pairs well with me. Sure, absolutely. Fair enough. That's a food pairing, especially on old world wines, is mm -hmm. very important. We need to have a different category. This is ancient world wines. Yeah, here. right. Yeah. And then the Hogs, it's 92. Is that from both of you? Okay. Nice. Yeah, great. And then, okay, Chris and Robin really want to revisit this in a year or two. I like the call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I say, I wouldn't necessarily go a full 10, but a five, five years, I think you're going to get some greatness. Yeah. Okay. I'm shocked, which if you guys just saw my face going like this, 93, Jason <laughs> and Jen, 93 without <laughs> food, 96 with our Armenian food. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i uh, love it that's okay right. so we whenever we have we're gonna have a different wine just slip them this bottle like oh. pour it out instead just... yeah. <laughs> uh, okay we think so, you guys were right about the food like yeah. i i didn't love my my dish because it had just kind of complex flavors for me like cinnamon and clove it was hard but like what were you saying with the wine well i i've eaten several things with cinnamon and clove and it's kind of like that sweet savory pairing right because um, i i like some african dishes that are like that oh yeah perfect. so i think that you know there's somebody earlier said the the wine had an allspice flavor in it so yes that compared com, like he tasted the food and he's like we're not going to eat this food this food's yucky i don't eat this food. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like no it'll be good and then when he had it with the wine it was like yeah i could eat this and drink this wine all the time like yeah Wait, are are you are you implying that Jason is a man of strong opinions? <laughs> no, never. And very basic taste. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, simple, simple taste. So we have now decided we definitely should try the 
food pairing ahead of time. Like, like I told you earlier in the store, like we just don't eat this late normally. So it's like, right. I got you. Bundaba. That's great. I'm glad it worked out well. Yeah, that's, no, that's fantastic. Right. And then let's say Consuelo said a 92. Nice. Julie said a 91. Love it. So thankfully, so thankful to try something different like this that I would not have otherwise picked it up. Yeah, that was my fun. Brian yeah. isn't here, but he would have given it a 91. <laughs> I love how she's voting for him <laughs> because he loves the cherry blackberry flavors. Yeah, okay. that makes mm -hmm. sense. Those um, were like, those are his the apple no, like even the white, like if he's drinking a white, he's going to want a sweet white. If he's drinking a red, he'll take like a little, the tan, like there are tannins here, but it's not like mouth puckering tannins. Right. Right. You can taste the fruit. There's some spice, which he likes, but there are some that are so spicy. He's like, this is where like weights. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is his. So I'm really trying hard not to drink the bottle by myself because he'll be home in like an hour so, <laughs> um, so that he can try it. And it's, yeah, he's going to love it. Well, if you fail, we've got more. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and then we have from both Snyder's 92. 92. I think this Beautiful. is the first time they've been exactly the same in a, yeah, in a, yeah probably a yeah. couple weeks. Well, like that was kind of what I thought was fun about this because, yeah. you know, for the new world lovers, it's got fruit, but for mm -hmm. the old world lovers, it's got character and spice. I think it's yeah. a, a cool wine. Yeah. yeah. Now, Rachel, you guys were eating. What were you eating? We had kebabs. So David's was oh. I was chicken and we had a couple different seasonings on it and it was the way to go because those green peppers are really spicy and really strong. And then for the onions too, it was the a way to go. Work? Sorry. Did the chicken work? Oh yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Because of the seasoning. We because have some. Of the seasoning. <laughs> So I don't eat beef or pork. I only eat, I'm a pollo pescatarian, but the chicken is as long as you have a really strong seasoning. We have a Frank seasoning from up north and it is strong. So just as long as you don't go too salty, but none of the sweet things or the cinnamon or anything that you were talking about, just a, a savory I grill. Like to, I would like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like a, like, a, like a jerk almost. Oh yeah. 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 We would try that with this too. Yeah. Definitely. I usually, I usually think about that when I see you, Dave jerk yeah. <laughs> no. it's only because you're so nice that no. he's able to say that no. yeah dave's the best come on so right. does anybody else want to share their pairings yeah we did a um we, we picked up the uh lamb or goose from uh Fahrenbacher's, uh over the weekend oh, nice. uh so we kind of made like a ragu that had um like a like a mushroom medley some eggplant uh, lamb and tomatoes, and then uh, had like homemade like a uh, mushroom ravioli, oh, and all yeah. went really, really, really well. Um, it, it played really nicely with it. Nice. Yeah, no, awesome. I love the pairings. Oh, and then we thank you for putting the link in there. Especially, I love slow cooker meals, so that's great. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. That's awesome. So the Armenian um, link, if any of you guys want to click on it and then save it to try it with this at another time. Absolutely. Never know what to do with turnips. So yeah. <laughs> I think it was my first time buying turnips, Laura. Yeah. I don't think I've ever bought turnips. <laughs> yeah. And he tasted, the very first thing he tasted out of the pot was a turnip. And he's like, why are we eating turnips? These are gross. But then <laughs> you, get our, you get them on our farm shares every fall and I never know what to do with them. So well, now you know. Right. Try that. Yeah. Armenian pot roast, basically. With Armenian okay. wine. Otherwise, yeah. wouldn't that yeah. great? We'll have but to try that because this is our bottle. Jake recommended Creole food. So we made jambalaya tonight. It was great. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Vegetarian one. <laughs> the what? What'd you say, John? A, veg made a, veg a vegetarian jambalaya for Brenda. Oh, oh nice. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so, good. I'm glad that worked too. Yeah. Well, it's very flexible wine. I felt like yeah. it was yeah so mm -hmm. yeah i think it can hold up to a lot of stuff like yeah. you could i think i think you could yeah flex this up or flex this down depending on whether or not you want a big bold you know braised beef with all these spices and stuff that really coming out mm -hmm. or if you want to kind of flex down a little bit and make like this really sort of uh, uh, make this really sort of like the big part of the dish. Like I, I think you can kind of go the way on that one. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can see just in what people have paired it with how flexible absolutely. it is too. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then we have we, a couple we, of I made burgers. Mm -hmm. Oh. So oh, yeah, yeah. mushrooms yeah. and onions to put on top of it. Avocado, um, mm -hmm. you know, and we just like did what well, we had some corn on the cob. Oh, by the way, Publix has really good corn on the cob right now. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, broccoli, and it was perfect. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, tomatoes. Yeah, fresh tomatoes. Jeff will be right over to pick up some of your leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> they are around the corner from us. That's right. So. Yeah. Too late. I can see it's working really well. With the mole Too late. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, I can see it's working really well with mole as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like it, it's a little samey, I think, for, for what the wine is and what the flavors are. But again, this is a big wine. So I think it could like go pound for pound with a mole, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can see that. Right. Absolutely. And then we have. Um, Oh, the cinnamon allspice reminds me of Greek bolognese that we've done, which incorporated a lot of the same baking spices. So that's what Robin said. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then the ciders, I can see this with tikka marsala. Or oh, yeah. Masala. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, That'd be really good. Mm -hmm. All right. So No, I love so. the flexibility. Okay, so at the beginning, I wasn't as much of a fan. I would have been like an 88 once it opened up. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, although well, this is my second glass. So yeah. I'm on a 92. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. I was really impressed. I, I had no idea. And it was that was part of the fun for me is going mm -hmm. into a wine tasting where I had no idea what to expect from from Armenian wine and being just like, this is legitimately delicious right. and wonderful. So I'm glad you guys all enjoyed yeah, it too. I thought you would. You taste so many too. It's got to be that, especially with like certain regions, you have an expectation of what you want it to taste like or what you think, mm -hmm. but there's no expectation there except this will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, that, that that's exactly true. That's like so many things like, okay, here you go. And this is Central Coast Pinot. I'm like, well, okay, it better taste like XYZ or I'm not going to be happy. Right. You know, but the Armenia is like, okay, let's see what we get here. Yeah, exactly. And it was, it was so good and such a pleasure. Zulal is a, a wonderful winemaking, uh, you know, uh, organization woman you know yeah. i don't know what mm -hmm. you know because obviously it takes a group you know right. to do it but and a great winery you said that they make um they make sparkling they do they make so a they, sparkling they a white whites, they do reds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah cool all right so next week right. let's go to next week's oh well first we'll thank our sources because okay. without them i wouldn't have much to say would i well you wouldn't have any visuals That's you might true. say a lot still well i do that <laughs> So Wine Folly, always, they're amazing. 750, Wikipedia, Forbes, uh, Wine Enthusiast, Venography, Book Your Wine Guide, and Stor uh, Storica. Storica, Storica Wines. They're the importer. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I remember from the back of the label. All right. So next week, we're going to continue on our bizarre trip down the rabbit hole. Really? To a region... It sounds like you're being You've facetious. never heard of before. I think you're going to California because you're being so facetious. <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. Let's see. Right. We're going to Napa Valley, California. Oh. We're Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, where is that? California, where is that? <laughs> All right. So the Band of Vintners, this is a really cool group, All right? So this is a group of winemakers that are all making other wines and they were all talking and they were all basically discussing how everyone would love to drink amazing Bordeaux all the time but you can't always drink that that's unreasonable for most people so what if we did the best we could for something that made more sense price-wise mm -hmm. and yet getting this really great grapes from the Napa Valley region with their with their contacts and that's what they did. And I thought this would be a lot of fun, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of, when we go back, let's go into something that, you know, they decided to make reasonable and delicious. And it's a collection of the, of great mind, young minds in, in uh, Napa Valley winemaking right now. So the Band of Vintners Consortium is a Napa Valley cab, Robert Parker, 92, Willie Wong, 91, food pairings. I was putting it and Jake's just said, Tell them if they don't know by now what to do with Cabernet Sauvignon, then they haven't been paying attention. Tell Jake that Jason asked you anyway. 
Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so, okay, right. well, I'm going to stop the chair a moment. And okay. saying that then, mm -hmm. since this is a Napa Valley cab, I want to see what the group would suggest. Hey, no. That's so you can either take the mic or you can type in the chat, but what, like looking at it, Napa Valley Cab, what do you want to have with it next week? What do you think would be good? I'm just going to sit here and enjoy my wine. Not so. to go like the easy way out that we always do. Anyway, although I say that and we didn't do it tonight because I'm solo, but, um, and tired, but, uh, <laughs> Listen, I hosted for five days. That's a lot of work. That um, is. Uh, drinks. The, the I charcuterie with the Napa Reds. I feel like because you get the spice. If you do like a spicy cheese or a spicy sausage in your charcuterie, um, but then you can also get some really rich cheeses in there that really complement the Napa Valley cabs. And then also, depending on some of the Napa Valley cabs can be a little more fruit forward. So we can, we do put sweeter, we put dates on our, um, on our charcuterie tray every week. So that the weeks that it's a little bit more fruit forward, like to see how it goes with that. Um, I feel like the Napa Valley has more like variety is not the word I want. Help me. What's the word of like flexibility. Um, thank you. Um, of uh, some of them are are way more tannin, some of them are way more fruit forward, and so I feel like the yeah. charcuterie tray really helps with the Napa variety um, of options that we could encounter next week. Um, whereas if it was Italian, I would say definitely spicier. You know, like it's mm -hmm. right. I think a charcuterie tray with just like two to three meats and two to three cheeses and two fruits, like done, and yeah. you're gonna be able to find the perfect fit pairing to go. It's yeah. kind of like what we do when we have Insta wine tastings, right? Like that variety of flavors to go with. Yeah, sure. Even though we have more right. wines, obviously, than one. But yeah, absolutely. Right. Because of that flexibility that she's talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, Chris and Robin, big old ribeye. Oh, that's right. Steak. Paul just wants food with it. Any food, food he just wants nice. to be able to eat with his, with his alcohol. That's and right. then um, I don't get that. A nice lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking maybe you're going to want more than that. That's right. That's right. Linda's always got a salad. Oh, right. true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Probably let, let's throw in some like portobello mushroom or something in there. That'd there be you good. go. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I always try a charcuterie, but Jen makes fun of it. Okay. You don't make a real charcuterie. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the fridge and some cheese. If you just pick up a Lunchable, it does not That's right. count. That's right. <laughs> That's oh, you weren't supporting me. Oh, right. <laughs> the pop tarts and raisins, no. I'm just a basic guy. The random stuff in your cupboard does not count. <laughs> I feel like it would be really fun to do like a charcuterie board, like how to make a charcuterie board event with a wine pairing at Tipples. I'm just saying. Oh yeah. Okay. With lettuce. No, Sorry. you're not invited. Well, I'll tell you guys about some other fun <laughs> things. We're going to be doing some fun new events coming up, but I'll tell you guys after we're done recording. Okay. So yeah, like I said, big uh, red meat, savory things. It doesn't have to be meat. It can be mushrooms, lentils, that kind of a thing as well. Um, go with savory and bigger flavors. Um, not as especially like spicy, but not hot right okay. not with the cab so flavorful, flavorful but not but necessarily right. hot but what about what julie was saying about having something sweet like if you had some dates or something oh yeah hot. absolutely chocolate okay. and um a little bit dates because you're going to play off the the, the, uh, the fruity What's side of things spicy but not hot like what does that mean so spicy would be more like um herby would be great so any of the herbs so those are you know uh, what do you, yeah, what do you it's using spices that aren't but Hot without spices. without the peppers. like not not cayenne or right. something you know like oregano or basil or things yeah, like and garlic like clover and, yeah. and all those things right yeah. right mm -hmm. yeah. so whether you're doing pot roasts or steaks or you know you know burgers or you know and and by the way you can do all those with vegetarian options mm -hmm. those are all work that kind of a thing so any of that will work. It's big and rich and you know, that, that'll work. Right, but not necessarily spicy in the form of that you're feeling fire. Right, you don't yeah. you really don't want like cayenne. It doesn't play as well with cab. Okay. You know, yeah. That would be more like Zinfandel. Or, I mean, there are options, but yeah. 
Yeah. Not no, cab. Yeah. Hot pepper is a spice, but it's, it's that I wish there were another term for using spices that are flavorful, but not necessarily hot spices. Yeah. But I, right. I evidently, my vocabulary is not large enough to encompass that. That's right. Put some cinnamon on your steak. You'll, you'll think. I bet there is a rub that has cinnamon. I'm in sure it. there that is. is. Delicious I'm sure there is. So. <laughs> like the smoked salts and there that you kind go. of thing. So. <laughs> All right. All right. So mm -hmm. that is what we're going to be coming back together for right. next week. Sounds good. Let's have a toast to Armenia. Yep. You guys make some great wine. Yep. Zulal. Awesome. Cheers, everyone. All right.